we know we're headed for extinction one way or another we might do it to ourselves sooner and the idea of becoming multi-planet and ult ultimately multi-solar system is about keeping humanity alive and this is this is a small step along the way but an important one yeah and of course it's on the anniversary this the day uh, that man first landed on the moon. This last minute, let's just watch and let's just listen and experience this launch. Booster is about to separate from the capsule uh, at any moment. It's supposed to separate at about 228,000 feet. And then at three minutes, three minutes from launch, uh, which is uh, very shortly weightlessness, they'll begin to experience zero gravity and they can float around.
Watching this as well is uh, is Colonel Chris Hadfield. Uh, Colonel, as you watch this, what do you think? Uh, you know, I I love flying rockets, but I feel so helpless watching rockets. I can't do anything to help those guys. But it looks like the rocket has done its job. That hydrogen oxygen engine, uh, you know, reusable, throttleable, and yet it got them to the edge of space. Now they're already up there in space. Um, I just want to make sure all the mechanical things work properly so that the crew on board can truly experience uh, the, the amazing sequence of events they're going through right now. So there's still a lot of systems have to work, but uh, so far, so good. Oh, hey, Colonel, let's listen to the, uh, the astronauts are speaking. <laughs> then they have to uh, get back into their seats, uh, buckle in because they're going to start to fall back to earth and they're going to pick up speed very, very quickly, five and a half G's uh, on the way down uh, at one point. There's three parachutes uh, that uh, will be deployed, uh, ultimately slowing down the, the capsule. and they're now descending back to Earth. The booster rocket is also descending to Earth. Uh, it is going to be... It should actually land shortly uh, in a vertical position so that it can be reused in future launches as well as the capsule will be able to be reused. Well, what was that? Explain that. Huh? Explain. Oh. Oh, so, Amazon, what we just heard were the sonic booms from the uh, booster landing back here on the landing pad just two miles away from where that booster took off. This is all part of that reusability uh, bit of Blue Origin and in this new era of space travel, being able to reuse the systems that can recreate. Uh, no longer the one and done of the past. And as you heard, we heard the sonic booms when it was uh, uh, coming back down here on Earth. And now no way, that's just sick. For that capsule. That's the next major milestone. But as you can see, we can see it right there, that pinpoint landing. I mean, Anderson, that's, that's a thing of beauty for Blue Origin. I mean, look at that thing. This is now the third time that that booster has flown to space. Nailed that landing. Now, there, now there's the capsule. And in, in just a few minutes, we're going to see three, hopefully, three big parachutes come out to allow that capsule to descend gently to the desert floor. But even if three parachutes don't come out, uh, they have contingencies in place for if it's only two parachutes or one parachute. And that's the redundancy that we have been talking about and why Blue Origin believes that this is such a safe capsule and reusable rocket. And boy, we don't need the video from inside the capsule to know that those astronauts had a great and time. And there you see uh, parachutes have, uh, have been deployed. Yeah, those are the, the drill parachutes. We're going to see the main parachutes in just a moment. 
There are also some thrusters on the capsule itself to help uh, fall into position. That, that's right. Well, what you're going to see right before it lands is a big kick of dust. That's because there's rest, uh, retro thrusters on the bottom to basically create an air cushion. So that it's a very comfortable landing. You know, as, as we were talking about, they were going 2,300 miles per hour. By the time this thing lands, Anderson, it's going to be going one to two miles per hour. And that air cushion uh, underneath is really going to just uh, make it that much more of a that much more of a comfortable landing. But we're about to see this thing uh, land. Uh, and those astronauts, I mean, I cannot wait to hear about this journey and to hear what their experience was like. Miles O'Brien, as you're watching this, it's extraordinary just how short this entire uh, adventure was. Yeah, and it's, uh, but it's still kind of scary, Anderson. You gotta, you know, when, when you're talking about uh, rockets, yep. <laughs> Softest landing in the world. Awesome.